So we're here in Senja, Norway with one of the best landscape photographers in the world, Daniel Corden. A lot of the people define you by your unique style. I want to know, how would you describe your style? I usually tell that my style is, uh, first of all, it's landscape photography. And uh, secondly, it's uh, the style about like three-dimensional landscape. I mean the landscape with a lot of depth and uh, lots of details, uh, flash panoramic images with some magical light. So it's uh, a sort of a magical world that uh, I create for myself, yeah. You go on a lot of tours every year and there are some places which you return to every year. Why is that and what inspires you to come to the same places every time and take photos? Well, definitely uh, we can travel in many countries and count like number of countries we visit, but it's not about me because I love to return to the same places and uh, see how they differ from year to year. And also it's a nice thing to work on, let's say, one country like a subject, like a project for you, for yourself. So every time you return to the same country and eventually after, let's say, five years of visiting Lofoten, you'll get such great images from uh, this place, from Lofoten Islands, that uh, it, it will be recognizable from all over the world and it will be possible to print images, to guide tours there at this place. So basically your name will be associated with this place. And it will be not just like uh, tourist pictures that you visit this place for a week. You bring a couple of images. It will be like a full time, many years project with many images and possibly exhibitions, possibly some books on the matter. So it's already, I consider this like a serious approach. For many years coming to the same place, it helps you to build portfolio and uh, to associate your name with this place. All right, so you've been in a lot of places in the world already, but can you name three places where you haven't been yet and where you would love to go? Yeah, of course. And <laughs> these are places basically I'm going next. So this year I'm going to Mongolia, to Myanmar, and in the beginning of January I'm also going to China. So three places just in uh, like four or five months, three new places. But I have like a huge wish list of places I want to go, <laughs> our planet is large and again I'm uh, just maybe 30% of places I visit per year is uh, new places and all other they are the same just to come again and again until you have the best possible light, the best possible conditions so you need to challenge, you need to struggle sometimes and come many times and then you get amazing shots. <music> Okay, so you've been taking landscape photos for a long time now. Do you never get bored of it? And do you sometimes want to maybe switch to portrait or some other style of photography? Well, just look back from me. So I think this place, it can never be boring if you visit it even 100 times. It's still a spectacular place. And uh, the thing about landscape photography, it's always different conditions. So last time I was here, it was raining, drizzling, and I didn't see even mountains from this top. And uh, what was yesterday on this uh, Kaipin mountain is just crazy. Like the fog, changing conditions, and I'm excited every time. Of course, there are places that uh, become a little bit boring, like uh, I went to Provence in July. So these places you go once, you take pictures of lavender fields, this is beautiful. But the second time you come, it will be the same. The same blue sky, the same lavender fields. So I love to return to places that uh, give me a challenge. You know, like Norway or to Arctic places like Greenland. So you come every time to these places and you have different uh, light conditions, different weather conditions, and usually 
it's quite harsh conditions. So you need to wait for quite a long time until you see something spectacular. Just on this trip on uh, Segla, on uh, Husfjellet and on Kaipen, we were very lucky. So three epic locations of Senja, we got crazy light. So this is like jackpot. But sometimes it's not happening this way. Sometimes you can come for a week. And like last time on uh, Senja in winter, I was just trapped in my room in snow blizzard. So this is about challenge and um, it's not boring because you always need to plan, you always need to wait, to struggle, solve logistics problems. So it's very interesting thing to do actually. So Daniel, the next question is to new creators coming to the platform. Obviously every minute millions and millions of photos and videos get uploaded to different social medias and the new creators coming, one of the problems they have to deal with is the fact that there already is so much stuff online and how do you not get lost in all of this and how do you create your unique style and... Yeah, it's not uh, easy indeed and uh, sometimes it's hard that you, let's say, all the social networks it can be demotivating but uh, this is the thing on which you need to work every day. So if uh, I'm absolutely sure if every day you spend, let's say, two hours on something. It can be music, it can be photography, it can be filming. If you spend two hours every day on your hobby, on uh, what you like most, then in two years you will achieve something for sure. But just you need to make it every day. So even like I'm making photography, let's say when I had the uh, like permanent job, I still Try to post images, process images, read books, also discuss with my friends, but every day. Because if you stop doing this, let's say for like six months you go to work and you completely break out of photography, it's like you're opening the tap and first it's like uh, dirty water running from the tap. And then it's the water only after it runs, the dirty water, it becomes clean. And the same if you just uh, starting photography after a huge break again. First it's the dirty water, you forget everything, you like lose your habits. So if you permanently working on yourself in this way, you will achieve everything. Just you do not need to, to stop and tell yourself, ah, I'm doing bad, no one like looking at my photos and it's like no one wants to like them. But it's not true, you just need to work, work, work on it and enjoy it. So if you're losing inspiration, you need to make something to achieve the inspiration. So for me personally, I try to go with my friends somewhere or try to have a company of friends that actually will give you a punch if in case you lost. So you and I remember it helped me a lot when I just started photography. Uh, sometimes I was a bit lost, like, do I need to go in portrait, in landscape, or is the picture good? So I had just good friends close to me, and they had, like, honest opinion, and uh, they just gave me a huge punch, like, uh, like slap on the cheek. Like, ah, okay, you need to just uh, grab yourself in hands and just go, go, go. So having these friends and having some people who understand you, uh, this is uh, a good thing to have because with also social networks it's a bit problem like uh, everyone just likes your image and uh, no one can give you a critique or some real advice what to do what to do next and i think this helps uh, most of all so for closer people that they are able to give you give you a good kick <laughs> So you see it a lot of the times now on social medias, people who are not very good in photography, who don't have much of experience, they post photos online and get more recognition and followers than people who put a lot of effort in, who study this for years. What is your reaction to this and how do you think marketing is important in this whole process of photography online nowadays? And would you say it's possible to achieve everything just with high quality of your footage and zero marketing or do you have to have a mix of both? I think it's uh, like 50-50% combination because like on one hand you can be amazing photographer but just uh, doing nothing about your marketing and 
it's uh, zero profit for your business in this case. You need to, uh, I'm a photographer, I need to spend like half my efforts on the trips and uh, getting photos and half of efforts on the marketing and keeping connection with the people posting images regularly, so keeping the audience intense. But if I will not do this, basically uh, I will not uh, just be proficient in what I'm doing. So it's like 50-50, you need to be, again, you need to be like a Swiss knife man, you know, you need to go in many directions simultaneously. Just I'm doing this alone myself, but uh, you need to think about so many things. It's like a business and it's very hard business to, <laughs> to maintain, actually. <music> Let's imagine if someone was to take away all of your lenses and you would have to choose just one lens to take all of your photos from now on. What lens would it be and why? Yeah, it's a very easy question because it's my favorite lens, 1424 Nikkor. I think I do just 90% uh, of my images on this lens. Just on this trip, it's a week and I, I even never put 2470. So during this week I took 100% of images on 1424. Uh, because it affects my style a lot, I really like to work with foregrounds, with some techniques I really like, like vertical panoramas and focus stacking. I have this uh, like beautiful spread of foregrounds and maybe finding something under my feet to fit it to the background subject. So this is my main style. Taking photos is important, but what is your favorite program and app for editing your photos? Oh man, I really love Luminar software. This is, uh, recently appeared on the market and uh, it allows me to edit uh, pictures like on the way, on the go, like really, really fast. And um, even now when we're on the hiking trip, I'm able to make it quite fast. Now, of course, if I have more complicated uh, things like panoramic images and uh, focus stacking, I need to use Photoshop for this. But for quick editing, yeah, it's Luminar. You can actually cre uh, create your own workflow, your own workspace and uh, save it also as preset and uh, control it very fast and very easy. So for me, the speed of processing, uh, how fast they can process images is quite essential thing. So and uh, sometimes using Photoshop or using Lightroom is very frustrating because it's uh, quite slow to manage. So if I have just one single shot, and I need to quickly process, I have everything ready in my own workspace, workflow in the Minar. In apps for editing, it's very important for the interface to be very native and very accessible. Would you say that's true with Luminar? Yeah, yeah, of course, that you have a friendly interface. And most importantly, uh, now we have a huge raw files so out of the cameras. Most importantly, that you process the pictures with uh, quite fast speed. As I usually do it just on the go in airports and like terminals in the airplane sitting and I need to post them. When I go back home, I simply do not have time to process images because I need to spend time with family. So many people say that your job is a dream job as a photographer. And some people even say it's not a job. It's just a hobby which, which uh, you make a living out of. Would you say that's true? Would you say your job is ideal? <laughs> well, most people think that like we as photographers, we jumping in the flower fields, <laughs> you know, taking pictures of flowers yeah. and just enjoying life. But it's not uh, true in some way because you need to spend lots of time like we do right now, just sleeping in the tent on some ridge and uh, hiking a lot every day, like to one kilometer top with a backpack full of gear cameras, tripods in the mud, in the rain, and then possibly you have a little chance of getting some result from this, <laughs> from all the struggle. And this is like everyday life. So not all people, they can do the same because it's challenging physically. 
Uh, it's out of the comfort zone for sure, so you need to struggle and this is the whole life. It's not like an office work when you get used to it, you work a little bit, you go to home and it's like, it's very easy to be in the circle of life, but it's so hard to get out of the circle and to uh, just, you know, like struggle in the mountains, wait for light and go in the mud and the rain. So with all this gear, you need the health and most importantly, you need the crazy motivation to make this thing. Yeah, it's not that easy at all. Also, you need to plan everything like logistics. You need some funds and cameras and travel. You need to be like a Swiss knife man, you know. So you need to make many things at once. You need to manage your social network accounts, manage your business, manage your money, also process your photos. And this is the thing where you need to make everything yourself. So it's uh, not like you can have some office or other people doing this for you. So you need to be, to go in many directions at once. Uh, this is very hard life, but this is very interesting life.